Welcome back, guys, to Friday Facts number 395 with me, Massive Dynamic. Today's Friday Facts is more about train stops, train stop controls, and specifically the interrupt. Apparently, they're making the use of the interrupt uh, much more flexible. So we start out by saying that it's tedious to build a lot of different interrupts, especially if you have an interrupt for, say, iron and then copper and coal and stone and iron plates and copper plates and green circuits and red circuits and stone brick uh, and you have an individual interrupt for each one so what they've done is they've new added a new virtual signal right here the any item virtual signal it's a special wildcard signal when used in a schedule interrupt it will match the first item that passes all weak conditions and replace the signal with that item this also replaces the rich tag text in the target stop name so what they've done is by using this new virtual signal, it would replace all of these interrupts in your train schedule. And it would handle each one individually based on its need. So here's how it works. It says when a train is ev evaluating an interrupt, which uses the any item signal, which is that new signal, it will check the interrupt condition against each item in the cargo. And the first one that passes it will be the passing item for the interrupt. The passing item will replace the any item in the interrupt target name and target weight conditions. And then they also have a similar thing for any fluid, any fuel, and any signal. Using these signals, the interrupt is more generalized and hands off as long as you ensure you have your stop names named consistently. So this is going to make the scheduling of trains a lot easier and quicker. You can virtually set up one interrupt that will handle your entire base with this new programming system. Now something I find interesting is here with this Spidertron remote. We see one with a number one next to it and one with a number five next to it. Now that's something that does not exist in Factorio 1.1. If you have a stack of, well, first of all, Spidertron remotes do not stack, they only stack to one, and there is no number on a Spidertron remote, so I'm wondering what this means, because I don't see any color on them either, but either they've added the ability to stack remotes in your inventory, or there's something else going on there, not sure what's happening. Okay, so this virtual signal is actually reading the cargo in the train, so suppose you have cargo in the train that doesn't match any of your stops, what will happen? Well, that's what they address here. In 2.0, they've changed. So what they've done is that if you have a train with an item that does not have a stop that matches the name, then they've changed it so that stops will no path for stops that don't exist. And also you'll see that there's a new no path signal or symbol on the map, which we'll see in just a minute. The next question is, does it still skip if I disable a stop with the circuit network? And here's how it handles that. In 2.0, disabled train stops will act as if they have a train limit of zero. So if a train is on the way and the stop is disabled, it will continue to the stop regardless. And if a train is told to go to a disabled stop, it will enter the destination full state and wait until it is enabled. This change will prevent the damage that disabling stops causes. It means you can have a slightly easier time controlling stops with the circuit network. For example, with an artillery outpost, just wire up a chest to read how much ammo is left and only enable the stop if ammo is empty. This way you don't need to include any combinators to trans translate the lack of ammo into a train limit. And here's the news on the no path alert. So in 2.0, the no path alert will be a global alert that will appear in your hotbar, just like an out of fuel train does now or a uh, item being damaged appears you'll have the no path alert this is especially true because if you're on multiple planets you will need to know when your train stop working now next we have easier train dis dispatching it says when a train blueprint is fully built importantly including fuel requests it will switch to automatic mode so let's watch this short video and you'll see you can build the trains with robots as long as you have their paths set and there's they have a fuel request as part of the blueprint then the trains will automatically dispatch and head to their first destination you don't have to manually set them to automatic it 
that's built into the blueprint. So that's going to make that really, really nice. Now next is train stop priority. So this gives you the ability to set the priority of a train stop all the way from 0 to 255. So this would allow you to prioritize your iron ore trains to make sure that they have basically the right of way when entering and leaving stations over something like say stone brick or stone. Now another thing that this will fix is when decommissioning trains, and I'm just going to read this here. It says we want the trains already at the stop to get out of the way, but sometimes they would just sit there and go, my destination's full. So another goal was when, when I tell a train to go somewhere manually, I want it to have priority. So any train that you send to a specific destination will have priority over other trains. So the way it works is that the priority of a train stop has two effects. One, when searching for a destination, trains will prefer a higher priority train stop. And two, when trains are trying to leave a stop, trains that stops with higher priority are dispatched first. Train stops have a default priority of 50, and players can adjust it to any number they want from 0 to 255. The slider in the train stop suggests values from 10 to 90, but you can be more precise with the text field. We also added the ability to set the priority using the circuit network, with 255 being the most important and 0 being the least priority. Okay, next is icons for train status. So as you can see, they've replaced the, the pop-up, flying text pop-up of no path and destination full with an icon. So here's the no path icon that flashes over the train itself. And here's the destination full. And this one, it says destination full is just a solid icon in alt mode. So altogether, these should make it easier to tell at a glance when a what a train is up to without having to do the mental pause to verify there's no flying text notification coming soon. Okay, so these icons here are all you get. No more flying red text, which was kind of hard to see anyway, the no path. And since this alert will show up on the map, it will make tracking them down a whole lot easier. So all in all, this will make your train management a little bit easier, especially if you use the interrupts with the new wildcard signal. So there you have it guys, that is Factorio Facts number 395. We'll look forward to more news next week. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.